I don't know how to record this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I really don't know what to say. But I wanted to update everyone to let you know what's been going on. A lot of you have been in my life for over a decade. And so I, it's only fair that I share this big part of my life. For some reason, I thought I wouldn't cry anymore because I cried. I thought I cried it all out, but anyways, so mama has passed. She's in heaven now and she passed away in the Philippines while on vacation. And a lot of you also know that mom has been going through dialysis for a long time. Mom has had kidney issues for as long as I could remember. Ever since I was a kid, mom had a kidney transplant. Um, I think it was back in the 90s and that that kidney lasted for many years and then in 2012 2013 she had kidney failure and has been on the list for a kidney transplant again since then and since then she's had dialysis treatment three times a week which has been I mean you could only imagine if you have anybody in your life that is going through dialysis, it takes a toll out of you. It's, I mean, it's draining. It's physically and mentally draining. And that's what she's been going through all these years. And despite all that, mom has always had such a, such a, such an uplifting spirit. <laughs> so anyway, she continued having dialysis here in the Philippines. And one day after her treatment on the 31st of January, or it was the following day after her treatment, mom called to my dad to call 911 because she was bleeding from her, where they pinned the needle for her, um, for the blood transfusion. And uh, this was early in the morning, I think six in the morning, the next, the following day. And, um, I remember my dad was telling me this. He's like, well, there's, they don't have 911 here in the Philippines. Um, so mom came downstairs. He said she walked herself downstairs and she was bleeding profusely. I mean, enough to like literally scream, scream out to my dad. She walked down the stairs herself, got into the car and they drove to the hospital in the car mom passed out and when they got to the hospital they tried to revive her for an hour and it was unsuccessful and that's when dad and my my tita mercy called me from the hospital i remember i was folding clothes back at home and i got the call that mama was gone I remember not feeling anything when I heard that. It took a while for me to process.
and then I anyway so I called my sister and I let her know which was really hard especially since I think two weeks prior she lost her mother-in-law which she was caring for and living with and there's a bird right outside my window <laughs> so I called my sister and I called my cousin at the jazz who was also like a daughter to mom <laughs> and hearing their their cries it was heart wrenching anyway and then I came back down and told Benji and he was just in the kitchen <laughs> thankfully the girls were in their rooms and then uh, an hour after kind of recollected myself and I knew we had to tell the girls and they were just quiet and stunned the next day Benji Oh, Benji works fast. Actually, that day he started looking for tickets to the Philippines. But I was thinking maybe, maybe we won't go. Maybe dad will decide to bring her back home to Washington. Um, but the following morning, dad did say ultimately that she was going to be buried here at home her home um, here in the Philippines. So right when I read that message, I booked my flight. I didn't have a passport. My passport is expired. I believe it expired just last year. And so we went and searched for my birth certificate, my birth certificate, cause I have to present all this stuff in order to renew my passport so I needed all you know just official documents I could not find my birth certificate anywhere we turned the house upside down literally spent the day looking at every little corner of the house pulling out boxes of papers and um anyways long story short we had other documents that the passport agency said that we can use and with my sister's help she was able to um send stuff from san diego where i was born and uh, i went to the passport agency in in downtown seattle got my passport expedited and that evening or that day by 4 p.m i had a passport um, a passport for Bella and I and so now we're here in the Philippines and this is my second day here I arrived at 4 in the morning <clears throat> excuse me me Benji and Bella and we're here to lay mama to rest she right now she's in the house and She's beautiful, she looks so peaceful. There's flowers all over. Hundreds of people have been coming and paying their respects. Her, her batchmates, which are her classmates from back in high school, um, relatives from all over, even family friends from our hometown in Washington are here. It's, it's still surreal, but I know I'm like crying right now and it's heartbreaking because it's, you know, when do I ever really get to talk in detail about what happened? But I really am okay. I'm okay. Dad's okay. The girls are okay. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know because YouTube is kind of like also my home and you guys are my family um 
Also, thank you for all the condolences. <laughs> the day after I found out, I did post on Facebook and Instagram and the outpour of messages and I'm just so grateful. Thank you so much. It really did make me feel good. It made me feel happy to know how much how many people mom has touched and also sad because of like the memories but everything's gonna be okay and thank you so much for your continued prayers and thoughts <sighs> okay that's it i'll see you guys later